Good evening. Welcome to Interesting Talks with Footprints. I hope you're well and your glass is half full rather than half empty. And as we always say, you can always top it up no matter where you are. Well, here we are coming to Valentine's Day, which is tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, I got it right. Um, but there's lots of things that's been going on. And one of them is it's kind of like a bit of a challenge that we're going to be talking about today. It's not something very enthusiastic or very, very joyful to talk about, but it's something we really do need to talk about. And it's something that is called grief. One of the most challenging things that we ever face in our life, the loss of a loved one. It can come after a long illness or very suddenly. But for those that are left behind, it's a major upheaval for them to manage or try to deal with. I don't know how many of you have been in that position or experienced it or know somebody that's been with it, but wherever you are in that, this pathway of life, should I say, being aware of what happens, the stages that we go through can be very, very, very useful. And of course, you can help other people to manage these stages. So it is somewhat of a taboo, but even to talk about it is a bit of a taboo. But I will try to explain the stages that we go through, remembering there's no exact order. And of course, we're all different people. So one of the first stages that people experience is called denial. Denial and shock can help us survive the overwhelming pain of grief. Over time, denial begins to fade and allows new waves of emotions to surface. That's for some. Sometimes it takes a long time. And some people will live in denial, a level of denial for the whole of their lives. Okay. Next one is anger. Underneath anger is often intense pain or fear. This can come in waves. And if you can let it out, it's not a bad thing. Because as if we do suppress it too much, it's like bubbles underwater. And they will come out at some time. And that time is most likely to be a time when you don't want it. You're talking to your partner, dealing with your children, family, other family members, maybe at work in a position where you just you just blow up on people and then you might have to apologise. You know, the next one is bargaining. Maybe this occurs in fleeting moments and will be as if thoughts, we, if only the thoughts that, you know, if we've done something differently, this can easily lead down the path of self-blame. We blame ourselves for things that have happened and the, the loved one that we've lost. We just want things to go back the way they were. Next stage would be depression. This form of depression is used to describe the deep loss and intense sadness and emptiness that we feel. This is totally normal reaction to loss. And some people will feel uncomfortable around us and frightened by it and they might even want to try to fix it immediately or to cure us well that can't be done and if you're helping somebody through grief you know and they're talking to you about their grief just listen to them you don't need you can't fix them you can't cure them it's going to take a hell of a lot of time for, for that person to to be okay ish the next stage we'll call acceptance when we give grief the time and space it needs, we can begin to feel more able to be part of the world again. It can be misunderstood for agreeing or liking the situation, but this is not the case. In acceptance, the new reality is still not okay. It's still not what we want things to be. But we begin to take on the new reality, at least for some, not for all, for some. Going back and forth between these states is normal. And if you find yourself overwhelmed with a wave of anger or sadness or anything else, that doesn't mean you've gone backwards. Grief comes in waves and we can't always predict what is going to happen. Now, I personally, I've been through grief. Uh, I've lost both of my parents. So I'm talking from a position of, under, of, of, of experience on this, apart from the psychological knowledge that I have on grief. And obviously I work with clients with bereavement. 
And it's been coming, as you get older, it's, it's, in, it's inevitable that it's going to start coming up a lot more in your day-to-day -day life, in your day-to-day -day experiences. And you're, you're going to might start, end up going to more funerals than what you go to christenings and weddings. So having an understanding of what to expect or what kind of emotions, emotional roller coaster that you might go through, that's the reason why I've done this video today on grief. It's not an easy subject to talk about. It's, it brings up emotions for anybody. It brings up emotions for me talking about it. Because as I said, I've been through it. And no matter how far away you are from your bereavement, there's always things that can trigger you. A music, a smell of a perfume, a smell of some cooking, somebody, a sound of somebody's voice that sounds like somebody similar to the person that you've lost. And it can bring you all the way back again. Now, that's just normal. Um, don't think you're abnormal or that something's wrong with you if you go through these things. And of course, as I know, as we all know, lots of people will just internalise this sort of stuff and not talk to anybody. Hence, I thought I needed to make this video because I've been seeing people going through it and I've got some clients that are going through it. And it's a subject, it's, it's taboo. People are scared to talk about it. And I get that. But at the same time, it's important to have an understanding when you're in a dark place, if you kind of like know where the stairs are, where the doors are, you know how to get down the stairs or up the stairs and you know where the doors are, you can open and close them. If that makes sense. So into two weeks time, take care of yourself. If you like this video, well, I'm not, you know, say like, but if you appreciate this video, leave your comments, leave likes, share with people that you know that could deal with something like this. And again, if you know somebody that's going through bereavement, then at least you've got the words, the understanding, some kind of, structure to help work with them to help them to get from point a to point b at some stage don't try to fix them don't try to cure them listen to them maybe explain to them that the stages that they will go through and you're there for them so for two weeks time take care of yourself try to stay positive bye for now